Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Rich Get Richard. And today we have a very, very, very special guest. This woman's uh, accolades are top, chop, you know, top of the charts. Um, when I first read over them, I didn't even like, couldn't even fathom how, how accomplished this woman was. And it's great to see that there's other individuals out there that are just doing wonderful things out there in the world. So um, I had to team up with her and I had to bring her on as a guest to uh, introduce her and her services. And maybe she can teach you something or maybe you can learn something and, uh, you know, kind of apply it to your life and, you know, take them necessary steps to accomplish your financial dreams, your financial goals, your generational wealth or however you need to do it. Right. But it all starts with little steps and knowing the right people and being exposed to those type of people are the type of things that you need to be doing, right? Networking and, and introducing yourself and, and meeting people who are doing things on different levels. So without further ado, we have my guest, Miss Renee. How are you doing? I'm doing phenomenal. Thank you so much for having me this evening. All right. That's great to hear. Um, just, uh, just a quick intro because I kind of talked about you a little bit. Just introduce yourself so people who don't know who you are and kind of can uh, paint a, a picture of like who you are as a person. Absolutely. Well, welcome, everybody. I am truly honored to be here with you. My name is Renee Bob, and I'm originally from Staten Island, New York, um, where I had the amazing opportunity to um, learn some basketball skills. And I was able to use those basketball skills to actually make the transition out of New York. I actually end up getting a full scholarship to play Division I basketball at Cheney State University in Pennsylvania. And then I got recruited to play for the United States Navy because at, the, at that time, if you wanted to play professional basketball, you actually had to go overseas to play. So it was wonderful for me to have the opportunity to actually serve my country as a Navy veteran and as a, as a Navy person, but then also um, play NATO basketball, which was amazing. And so once I decided to make the transition out of the military, I decided to start my own business. But at that time, a single mother of two amazing children. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any real money to actually get the business up and running. So I started doing some research into what kind of grant funding opportunities can I tap into? I did some research on those opportunities that fit me as an entrepreneur, apply for a grant and end up winning $25,000. And so I was able to use those funds to start my own business. And that's really how I got the start in doing the whole grant funding. And I was working with people to help them to make the transition out of the military, the holistic approach, like a career consultant. Then more and more people really wanted me to help them to be an entrepreneur. So I just started studying everything I could about entrepreneurship. I started speaking for like the SBA, the Small Business Development Center, SCORE. I just started traveling around the country, speaking, teaching, and training people on how to actually start their own business. And then from there, I actually wrote my first book. And uh, what's interesting about that is that people would always say, do you have a book? Like, do you have anything that they can actually take with them once they heard me speak? So I gave a man my manuscript to a graphic designer. He put together a little booklet for me. I had a speaking engagement coming up. I had a line of people around the corner waiting to actually purchase a copy of my book. So that's really where the book publishing lady was birthed. And I also am the owner of the Grant Funding Academy, uh, where we actually work with entrepreneurs and nonprofit agencies to teach them how to find grant funding, apply for grant funding and win grant funding dollars. And my clients in the last couple of years have won over $2.1 million in grant funding. And myself also, we have won many, many, many grants. I'm also the proud owner of the Music City Icons, which is a semi-professional women's basketball team located in Nashville, Tennessee. And we are a feeder to the WNBA, then international teams as well. But I make sure my players have financial literacy, and understand their credit and they have a plan for when their basketball career is over, they know how to be able to make that transition. So I say all that to say that I love being an entrepreneur and I figured out a lot of different ways in order to be able to monetize my talents, my skills, and my knowledge. Hey, I told y'all she was good. I told y'all. And, and um, a lot of that other, some of the other stuff I didn't even know about, you know, about the WNBA teams and that you played basketball. And I'm sure that you're probably 
um, really proud of what these girls are even doing nowadays because now they're like getting into like the bigger arena, they're getting bigger endorsements. And, and even now I even find myself watching more WNBA because it's just out there. You see between, it starts on social media and then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And they, they pushing the, the agenda and, you know, I, I love what, how that's turned out, but I didn't even know a lot of that about you, which that's um, pretty impressive. So, I mean, be, before all of that came along, before all that great stuff came along, I'm sure that it was still, you know, probably a, um, back in Staten Island and um, in New York, just growing up and just coming from a place where the majority of minorities come from. So, like, so how was it like growing up and um, in like your childhood and kind of led you to your path of, of success? That's a really good question because my mom and dad met at Lane College in Tennessee. And my dad was a research doctor. And then my mother was an educator. And so we grew up in one of the most prestigious environments in Staten Island, New York. We were the only Black family um, on that particular block. Um, but unfortunately, my mom and dad ended up getting a divorce. And a lot of it stemmed from financial challenges. And what's interesting is when they had financial issues, they would close the door and they would say, this is grown folks business. So we never got exposed to or educated about how to deal with financial challenges. So anyway, they end up getting divorced and we end up going from this beautiful, prestigious, wealthy environment into Stapleton projects in New York. And if y'all know anything about Stapleton, y'all know about the Wu-Tang. That's exactly, so we're all from that same <laughs> environment. And so it was a culture shock. And then the kids teased me really bad because I came from this wonderful environment. I had no idea what it was like living in the projects. But the blessing about that experience is that I know how to work with those that are multi-billionaires. And then I also know how to work with those that are struggling financially as well. So I would, I would always wonder, like, why did I have to go through that type of challenge? Because going from being very wealthy to very poor, like something happens within you and it gets embedded in you until you're able to do something in order to be able to shift that from your life. Then let me give you a great example. A good friend of mine wanted to do a workshop together. And so I wanted to charge $799. She wanted to charge $7,999. So that's a huge disconnect. And she said, Renee, you have some money hangups. You have some, some money challenges. You have some money beliefs that are not serving you right now. So she encouraged me to start learning things about how do I begin to shift my energy? How do I begin to get rid of that baggage? Cause I'm no longer that little girl that went from being very wealthy to being very poor. You know, I had transitioned into an entrepreneur but I still had that baggage. So she taught me how to be able to learn and get some skill sets so that I can get rid of that baggage and I can really focus on building a business and really building financial wealth, not only for me, but also for my children. Oh man, that's that's great. To hear. I mean, it, it it's kind of crazy that you say that too, because um, me growing up, I kind of did the exact opposite. I grew up like really, really poor. And then I went into like this middle-class neighborhood where I spent the, predominantly the middle age of my life. And I saw like, but I still could see the, my family members and my cousins who were still on the, the poorer end. And then I also was associating and hanging with individuals who were like very, very well off. So, you you know, I think you sometimes I think it makes you a better person when you see both sides of the coin, like you live both of those lives. It makes you one makes you more relatable. And two, you can identify and understand people's struggles. And just like your. Uh, friend said, you know, sometimes having that mentality of, man, I'm, I'm on the cheaper side, you might feel like, man, that's a lot, but to, to lots of the world, they look at what you can offer and they say, you are undercharging. You are way more valuable than this. And I think a lot of people in the minority community maybe feel like, you know, I'm kind of good for a minority and you shouldn't think like that. You're, you're great for just the individual and never put yourself down on anything you ever want to do in life. I like that. I like that example that you kind of brought up. So, I mean, you talked about different opportunities for yourself and different uh, for your family and stuff like that. 
So let's go ahead and uh, let's start talking a little bit about like grants and like what your focus on and, and, and like how you go about your like day-to-day -day operations or what's your like specialty. So like, so let's get into like grants and how that works because I'll always get people that'll say, I want to write grants. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go about it. I know it's free money, but how do I get into it? So can we just kind of go ahead and get to some of that stuff? Absolutely. And so remember, um, Richard, back in 2008, there was something very significant that happened. And it was the Great Recession, where, you know, if we were paying attention, we would have been able to see, you know, how the world was getting ready to shift financially. And so unfortunately, the business had been doing very well up until the Great Recession. So when the Great Recession happened, I ended up getting affected by the recession because I was reactive rather than being proactive. Just like right now, you can see how technologies come into place, artificial intelligence. So are we being proactive and learning about these amazing opportunities that are out there or are we sleeping at the wheel? So during the Great Recession, um, President Obama created this stimulus program. So for me, it was a huge opportunity to tap into the multi-million dollars of grants that are available to help individuals that were dealing with some sort of financial issue during the Great Recession. So at that time, 93% of my revenue was coming from individual people doing coaching, you know, selling books, you know, doing a lot of training, right? But um, during the recession, when I had problems, they also had problems too, right? So it taught me that I really need to focus on creating multiple streams of revenue and grant being that one, that number one place that I wanted to focus. So I started doing some research to see who, I was living in Nashville, Tennessee at the time, who actually received some grant funding in order to be able to work with individuals, especially entrepreneurs, that are dealing with some financial challenges as it pertains to the recession. So again, President Obama had that amazing stimulus package going on. I researched the nonprofits that actually received those funding. I actually put together a proposal to send them the proposal saying that I've been through some financial challenges, but I wrote a book, a financial literacy book. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I can help people get their financial households in order. I end up winning four of the seven grants, which took me to six figures literally in less than 30 days because I was doing the same thing with each particular organization because all of them received the same, type, the same type of opportunity. So that's really not only the grant that I received when I first started, but this was another way for me to really sink my teeth into getting access to some of the funds that are out there. So I had to do several th different things. Number one, I had to take an inventory of who I am. And so I am a woman entrepreneur. I'm a minority woman entrepreneur. I'm a minority woman military veteran entrepreneur. I'm a minority woman veteran disabled military, right? So all these different things that I am. Then I also had to look at what grant funding opportunities that are available geographically, because believe it or not, there are so many different grant funding opportunities that are right there in your own backyard. And then the third bucket that I looked at, it was the industry, training and development, you know, and so I started looking for grant funding opportunities that support the industry that I'm in. And I just started doing this thing, what we call is Funding Friday, which today is Funding Friday, where every single Friday we apply for three to five different grants. And so one of the tools that I created is the grant funding list, like the one for the month of July has 250 different grant funding opportunities out there. There's tons of grant resources out there, but based on what happened back then, I created this amazing system. And that's why my clients are able to get so many grants is because we sit our behinds down and we apply for grant funding. Every single Friday, we apply for three to four different grants, and that's why we're winning grant funding. Okay, 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 okay. All right, <laughs> and we get to the good stuff now. We we um, talking about you know getting grant fundings. We're talking about uh, funding Fridays, and now we're getting to the to the to the to the money aspect about this, right? 
And I'm sure anybody who's watching this is uh, pretty much glued to the screen because this is great information. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break and then click on the next video, come back, and um, we're going to continue our conversation. Hope you find value in this. Please make sure you like and follow and see you in the next video.